it. It always blows on my house, that wind. Whistling all the time, all the time. The house is empty now, but not for long. I can hear them. You see, the photos don't do it justice. I think they were quite accurate. It's a lovely room. If you like dark. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry, Miss Parkins. Miss Parkins, if you don't mind. Oh, that's right. You said that. Forgive me, Miss Parkins. I'm just a little nervous. No, you shouldn't be. You explained all about the house back in your office. It's funny. I've been in the business for 20 years, and I've never had to show a haunted house before. I don't believe in any ghost nonsense. If the dead were walking the earth, the Bible most certainly would have told us so. Oh, you're right, of course. I guess I shouldn't have read Mr. Knott's book about this house. I'm not familiar. Samuel Fullerton Knott, the house's last owner. He was some kind of ghost expert, I guess. Wrote over 50 books on this subject, including two on this house alone. And he lived here? You didn't mention that. Well, I should look into this, of course, but the lawyer taking care of his estate said he didn't live anywhere for the last few years. He owned five or six houses around the world, but he didn't stay in any of them. He stored his treasure on earth instead of heaven. That's why he wandered. <laughs> the houses were all supposed to be haunted. He traveled between them and did research. That devilish wind. Does it always blow like that? Well, the ocean is a quarter of a mile away with nothing but sand between it and us. There's a natural granite deposit right below us. That's what the house is built on. That's what allows it to be so isolated. It was built in 1896 by a timber lord named Augustus Rose. He wanted privacy above all, so when he found this spot in the middle of a dune sea, practically, he built on it. Granite, you said? The foundation is granite? Yes, a stone outcropping about 300 feet deep. Oh, good. The Bible strictly forbids building a house with a poor foundation. Uh, yeah. Now, Miss, Miss Parkins, about the asking price. Well, money is very little object for me, Miss Franklin. Father has left me a wealthy woman. I'm going to make this into a place where men and women of God can come on furlough. Furlough? Missionaries, of course. In the mission field, converting the heathen. Oh, sure. My sister did that for a while. You know, I don't think they call them heathen anymore. The asking price is too expensive, of course, but I could easily afford it. Well, if you'd care to make a counteroffer now, I'm sure we could... Is there someone upstairs? I, uh, don't really know. That does sound like a rocking chair, doesn't it? Well, there's not a stick of furniture down here. Is the upstairs furnished? No. Miss Parkin, are you sure this is the house you want? There was a lovely Tudor near the university. <laughs> are you suggesting I would be frightened by a ghost story? <laughs> oh, no, of course not. But don't you hear that? It sounds like it's coming from upstairs. Ooh. I hear nothing of the sort, and neither do you. But it's right there. You did hear it, didn't you? I would like to buy this house, Miss Franklin. It doesn't feel right. This place doesn't feel right. As I say, the original price is too high, but I'm sure I can knock them down a peg or two. It's not just the sound. It's everything. Miss Franklin. I I'm sorry. Are you sure? I mean, really sure? If something in this house doesn't want you to be here... I will hear no more about ghosts. I have my lord to protect me. Protect you from what? I thought you said, you said there was no such thing as ghosts. Do you wish to sell this house or not? Well, it is lovely, isn't it? It's perfect. So, everything's okay out there? I told you, Miss Franklin, everything's just fine. Okay, I'm just worried. 
The storm's kicked out all the power in town. As I say, I am fine. The moving men have gone. It's my first night in my new home. What could be cozier than a little weather? <laughs> the dunes is practically made for it. What did you say? Something about dunes? I've decided to name the place. It's called the dunes. Really? I never mentioned that to you? Mentioned what? That's funny. I could have sworn. Miss Parkin, the dunes is the name of the house. The name Augustus Rose gave it. Hmm. Well, that's hardly a surprise, is it? The house is practically in the middle of a sand dune. Well, of course. At any rate, I am fine, and your offer of help is... Ah! Oh, oh, there goes the phone. <laughs> she was right about the storm anyway. <laughs> Well, here you are, Cynthia. Your beautiful house far away from the stain of sin. Far away from everything. <laughs> now, none of that. No feeling sorry for yourself. Idle hands, after all. There. Better. <laughs> You're acting silly. You're acting lonely, to tell the truth, as if father weren't in a better place. Honestly, Cynthia, you behave as if he's gone. He's watching down on you right now from heaven. You don't hear that, Cynthia. Put it right out of your mind. You were in the room today. There's nothing in it. Not even a mouse turd. Oh, Cynthia, your, your language. <laughs> what is that? What? <sighs> it's nothing. That's what. Put that thought right out of your mind, Cynthia. <laughs> what? What's that? Who's that? Who's there? There's someone in this house. You there! Get out of my house! Leave this instant! You hear me? You hear me? He's on the stairs. He's coming down the stairs. Okay, there, there's nothing there. Go look. And there will be nothing there. Get up, Cynthia. Get up. <laughs> oh. Father was right. You're nothing but a little fool to go to the stairs. There's nothing there. Go to the stairs. <gasps> Get out of my house. <gasps> Who are you? Get out of my house, Cynthia. <laughs> I'm fine. Really. Well, how about something else to drink? I don't know how many times I need to tell you I'm fine, but I'm approaching my limit. I'm sorry. Don't snivel and don't slouch. It bothers me. <laughs> you remind me of an aunt I had. Why are you here anyway, Miss Franklin? Is this some extra service your office provides? Well, it was just with the men here today. I thought you might like some company. How is the remodel coming, anyway? It's fine, and I don't need any company. Now, now, I happen to know a little about being a gal on your own. Company never hurt. If it were only that, I might agree. What do you mean? Oh, you know what I mean. It's all over your face. You feel guilty. Well, maybe I do. I had a bad feeling about selling you this house. That night you broke your ankle, I had a bad feeling. It's a sprain. And it had nothing to do with you, and certainly nothing to do with ghosts. I never suggested it did. But that's what this is all about, isn't it? You've decided that Mr. Knott's awful books were all correct, and that you've sold me a haunted house. Therefore, 
car, you're filled with maudlin regret for putting the poor helpless old babe... I never thought... Helpless old babe through this ordeal. Well, there is no ordeal, I assure you. You're a difficult person, Cynthia. Uh, But if you insist on helping me, you could go upstairs and check on the workmen. It's difficult to manage from a wheelchair. I'll do that. Make sure they're dividing that sunroom right down the center, but I don't want the wall splitting the window. I'll see to that. And Cynthia, try and get some rest. I'd prefer Miss Parkin. Uh, excuse me, you there, uh... It's Jeff. Yes, Jeff. Uh, could I have a word with you? You're the boss. Mm -hmm. How is the work proceeding? Well, I think we got a day on framing, at least. Call it another day for sheetrock and plaster. Paint beyond that. Should be done by the weekend. And it's it's uh, going well? No problems? No unforeseen difficulties? No. Pretty simple job. Especially for these guys. What you are paying made it real easy to get a good crew. When we're done, it looked like this house was built with two extra bedrooms. Uh, that's fine. I... I had something else. Something wrong with your voice? <coughs> I don't wish that other woman to hear me. I need to ask you how quickly could you remove the stairs? Do what now? The main staircase off the hall. How quickly could you remove it? What do you want to do that for? Never mind. How quickly? You mean you want to leave the whole second floor with just the back stairs to reach it? That's crazy. We'd have to bring in beams, take the load off the floor upstairs, rip her out, and then you'll have a big old hole up there, not to mention a mess down here in the hall. Yes, but how quickly? Lady, I wouldn't do it. Beautiful old staircase like that? You take it out. You just leave a scar in the middle of this house. Well, that's very poetic. But I have practical reasons for doing it. What practical reasons? Margaret, how long have you been there? Who are you talking to? What would possibly make you think about taking out those stairs? The stairs aren't safe. (laughs) Lady, those are oak with pine six by beams underneath. When this house rots away and falls down, those stairs will be standing there by themselves. Why would you want to take out the stairs, Miss Parkins? Why are you looking at me like that? Excuse me, I gotta get back to work. You saw him. What? You saw Mr. Rose. I don't know to whom you are referring. Yes, you do. You saw someone at the top of those stairs, so you wanted them taken out. That's preposterous! Of all the ridiculous stories to cook up at... Cindy, I know this is difficult, but you should know. Legend has it that people who see Mr. Rose are destined to stay here. Well, I can see this conversation is going to get us nowhere. I don't think I have to tell you, Miss Franklin, that your services as real estate agent are no longer required. The only thing you can do for me is to cease coming out here. I'm only trying to... You are only trying to ingratiate yourself to a wealthy woman. And it's very unappealing, I must say. What? What? I know why you're here. It's the money, isn't it? Selling houses isn't good enough for you. You're trying to get all my money besides. When I met you, I thought maybe you were different. I thought maybe you weren't like all the others I'd met. So high and mighty with your religion, staring down at the rest of us like we weren't worthy to smell your... Oh, that's enough. Well, I can see now. Unfortunately, I can see it all now. You won't need to worry about me any longer, Miss Parkins. But there is something in this house, something malignant and even evil. My lord protects me from evil. Your lord didn't protect you from that ankle, did he? I'm not going to sit around here and argue with an ignoramus. Get out of my house. Take my advice. Either get out of this place or learn to pray harder. Or maybe just humbler. Oh, get out! You there! It's Jeff. (laughs) I don't care what it is. How much to take out the staircase? Lady, I wouldn't do it for any price. It's not right. What do you mean it's not right? You'll do it all right. This is my house, and I'll decide what's right, and you'll do what I say, or you'll have your little walking papers. That's the way you want it? We get full pay. You won't see a single... You signed a contract, lady, and it was with our local. Take the union to court. You think it'll do any good, but don't think you'll get off without paying us. You're fired. Do you hear me? Clear out your equipment this instant!
Got a vein there in your neck, and your color ain't so good. Get out! Sure, lady. We'll get out. We'll just let you sit here and rot. How about that? Oh, and in the meantime... Uh, what? Uh, what are you doing? Pushing your nice wheelchair over here by your precious stairs so you can do your sitting right close to them. Uh, move me back where I was this instant! Bobby, Paolo, job's over. We've been fired. Get your stuff and bring it around back. I'll bring the truck around. Is anybody here? Anybody? Please don't to go to any trouble, Cynthia. I felt like cooking anyway. But your ankle. Oh, uh, my ankle's fine. I've been out of that chair for a week. I've never felt better, and the day I couldn't cook for a man of the cloth. I haven't been called that in years. Is the day I hope the Lord takes me. Perish the thought. <laughs> Miss Parkin? Uh, call me Cynthia, Reverend. Everyone calls me Cynthia. All right. I have to confess, this isn't just a social call. Ah, I see what it is now. You'd like me to attend your church. Well, of course, but... <laughs> I half expected the local ministers to come around once the word got out. A wealthy Christian woman would make quite a nice addition to your congregation. Hmm? Und undeniably. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, I haven't decided where to go to church yet. Being laid up with this ankle has slowed me down some, but I intend to get into the village very soon. Uh, which church was yours again? I don't quite have a church at the moment, but I used to serve at St. Joseph's on Oak Street. There's a splendid priest there now, a charming woman named Barbara. Oh, <laughs> I don't care much for female ministers. Uh... Well, just a thought. You are retired, Reverend? Yes. Uh, what do you do with your time? Visit. Visit like this. Yeah. And I'm very interested in local history. This house you have, for example, it's quite a centerpiece. Yes, I gather. Do I understand that you tried to have the main staircase removed? It's my house, isn't it? I have the right to do that if I wish. Oh, I don't deny that. But there are historic considerations to take into account. I also understand that you saw Mr. Rose. That is not funny, Reverend. I did not intend it to be. The real estate agent told me about that ridiculous ghost story. Margaret? Charming woman. A credit to the community. It's criminal is what it is. I don't understand how someone can hope to sell houses telling frightening stories like that. So, you did see something. What if I did? The imagination, when not occupied by prayer, can be difficult to manage. Well, our Mr. Rose is a particularly intimidating presence. It doesn't surprise me that you felt strangely about him. You talk as if you believe these stories. Oh, I do. Haven't I mentioned? I lived in this house for a short time. I had to leave once I saw Mr. Rose. <laughs> That's wicked. Now, Miss Parkin, please. Ghost stories. You, a minister of God, believe in ghost stories. There are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in the minds of men. That's not scripture. That's Hamlet. So it is. Well, you cannot be a Christian and deny the spiritual world, Cynthia. But ghost stories? Children's fairy tales? And what about heaven and hell? What about them? Well, if a body is dead, the soul must go to one 
or the other, not hang around the parlor like an unwanted guest. Well, there are mysteries in the world, of course. And as for heaven and hell, think of it, Miss Parkin. Hell was only fire and brimstone and devils with pitchforks in Dante. Who's to say what eternal torment might be for each of us? Maybe being tied in a room, sitting, watching life go by and having to deal with the fact that you don't matter anymore. And you never will matter. And yet, you can't leave. Well, you're giving it some thought, I can tell. A true heart is always searching for God's will, not deciding what it is in advance and sifting through dry pages for justification. <sighs> I think you had better leave now. Think about what I've said. I know what I believe. Yes, that's the problem. Just ignore it, Cynthia. Just ignore it. Ah! Oh, mercy! You're not there. It's not happening. Do you hear me? You're not there! Cynthia? I'm sorry, did I startle you? How on earth did you get in here? Well, I let myself in the back. I wanted to check on you. You came through the storm, dude. I was feeling guilty. I'd forgotten to mention this old wiring habitually goes out in storms. Well, as you can see, it's all perfectly fine. <laughs> it seems I'm here just in time. Here, I happened to slip a candle into my pocket before I came over. <gasps> there, that's not so bad. My, my father's house. There was a fire when I was young. I detest candles. Do you have a generator or a flashlight? Flashlight? Somewhere. Uh, I'm not sure where I put it. Well, at least take the candle to get yourself up to bed. Bed? <laughs> I'm not. I was reading. I suppose I should go to bed since, well, the lights are out. <laughs> You're frightened, aren't you? No. The storm. It's... it's getting on my nerves. Well, then, I'll sit with you for a while. So, how are things in the house? You don't need to stay. Nonsense. I feel we've become friends. Does that offend you? Uh, of course not. With my eyes on the Lord, the things of this world don't concern me. Well, then, tell me, why haven't you invited anyone in to stay here yet? The remodeling was done weeks ago. Well, I just, it's, it's been difficult going into the village. Cynthia, may I make an observation? You're afraid. Afraid? I don't know what you mean. You're afraid of this house. Afraid of what people will think. You're even afraid of me, unless I'm very much mistaken. You are mistaken. I am not afraid of anything. The Lord is my strength. Oh, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I am not afraid. Don't quote scripture at me. It sounds wrong coming from your mouth. Well, it should. I don't believe it. Any more than you do. What? You don't believe any of it, Cynthia. Oh, it's a convenient excuse to lord it over people and justify your prejudices. It's a thick enough book that you can find justification for just about anything. People have, you know. You and your blasphemous mouth can leave now. I don't need you here anymore. You never did need me. I was never even invited. I just showed up. That's right. So, so then just leave. I couldn't leave, Cynthia. Leave you alone in the dark, the house creaking all around you? What do you think you're doing here? Trying to scare me to death? No, of course not. I'm not trying to scare you at all. Get up, Cynthia. What, what do you mean? I mean that you're to get up now and come with me. What's wrong with you? You look strange. Oh, it's just the candlelight. Get up now. There's something I have to show you. Something about the house I forgot to mention. Well, that's all very good, but I, but I think I'll stay here now. Get up. Uh, it's dark in the house, and I've just come off of a nasty fall. I'd hate to have another... Get up. Oh, yes. 
Yes, of course, if, if there's something you need to show me. Can you tell me what it is? You already know. That's, that's not true. Isn't it? Cynthia, tell me, where did you and I sign the papers for this house? At your office, of course. Really? Where is my office? I... it's... it's there, in the village. Why are you trying so hard? You can't tell me where my office is because you've never been there. You telephoned from your father's old house and the secretary mailed you everything. I don't understand your office. Well, then what does it look like? What plants have I? What paintings are on the wall? There's a man there with a rather vulgar calendar in his cubicle. You surely would have noticed that. I'm sure I don't notice such things. Don't be silly. It's all you do notice. Come on up the stairs with me. Uh, all right. You noticed vulgarity and nastiness all around you, Cynthia. The world is just a revolving cesspool to you. Your father felt the same way. That's why he taught you how to rise above it all. To feel superior. How to lose yourself to so much piety that you never even open an eye to a human being around you. You did not know my father. I don't need to know him. I can see what he wrought. Well, we're at the top of the stairs. Yes, we are. The top of the stairs in your new house. The house that you knew all about from the very first look. The very first time you walked up the front steps. You could smell it, couldn't you? I don't know what... No games. You came alone. <clears throat> I was waiting for you on the porch. When you found me there, ready to show you the house, you only questioned it for a second. Then you just went along. When the Reverend appeared one day, asking to speak to you, you could see it in him, too. But you didn't question it. You just went along. You were always very good for going along, weren't you, <gasps> Cynthia? Reverend, what are you doing here? Me? I never left. None of us ever left, Cynthia. We've been around the entire time you've been here. Even when you ignored us. We've never been gone. That's ridiculous. You... You work in a little office by a square. And you, Reverend, you live retired in the village and are interested in local history. I'm interested in local history. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? What's this about? Did you ever have one like her in your church? Certainly. One so certain that she knew what was said that she never bothered to read the book. Rather like me. It's time, Cynthia. What? You've played your games long enough. You're not walking through the valley of the shadow of death. You moved right in. You smelled death in this house, and you just laid right down and made yourself a home. I don't understand. Still? You don't? You don't know why you're here? No. Then turn around and look. <gasps> I told you to get out of my house. Why didn't you listen? Why? You're not real. I told you to leave. Now you have to stay. You have to stay forever. No! Are you all right, Cynthia? That was a nasty fall. Yes. Yes, I, I think I am. Let us help you up. There. Better. My ankle. What about it? It feels better. It feels perfect. The kitchen, Cynthia. That's your place now. Go to the kitchen. The kitchen? Yes, just as I have the front porch. And I have the hall. And Mr. Rose has the upstairs, he and his rocking chair. You're to go to the kitchen. We knew that was your place from the very beginning, didn't we, Margaret? Oh, yes. I suppose I could go and bake something. You do that, dear. Don't look back, Cynthia. It's better if you don't look back. Why can't... I... Don't. Just don't. We'll take care of everything out here. Oh, 
She doesn't look very peaceful lying there, does she? None of us ever do. So, you can see, Father, it's a beautiful old house, but troubled. Oh, not Father, Miss Jane. I'm, I'm no priest. I'm just a regular minister. I'm just glad I found someone to listen to me. I've owned this house for six months, and I can't even spend a night here. Uh, there are problems. I can sense that much. What do you recommend? Well, prayer, of course. A prayer vigil. We can organize it at church, 30 people praying here around the clock. I know Father Donnelly down the parish. I can ask him to come along if it'd make you feel better. I... I guess... He's a good man, Donnelly. Powerful, strange beliefs, some of those Catholics, but Donnelly's a good man. That's all it will take? Now, if it is within God's plan, child, that you live in this house, then you will live here. But you have to be prepared for the possibility that the place is uninhabitable. If the souls you've seen and heard can be put to rest in preparation for the great judgment, then all to the glory of God. But some souls don't understand that, just as some people don't. Is... is someone in the kitchen? No. That's her. That's one of them right there? She's the hateful one. You can almost feel her when you go into the kitchen. I've seen the woman on the porch, and the man in the clerical color in the downstairs hall, and I've heard the rocking chair upstairs, but she's the worst. Now get that hate out of your voice. Whoever she is, she's suffering. What? What can we do? Just come away now. Come away and pray for a child. <laughs> 